Hey guys, it's Junior. Welcome back to my channel here at Horsepower Warehouse. We have been absolutely killing it back here at the shop. So let's dive right into it. I have some really cool stuff I wanna share with you guys. So first and foremost, Ivana is my newest helper here. Everyone, please welcome her. She has been absolutely phenomenal lately. We have in the last couple of weeks went over fiberglass, um, a lot of Corvette oriented learning going on here, but she's doing fantastic. So we're glad to have her on board. We have been working diligently on pretty much everything that I'm about to show you, beginning with this 67 coupe, the white car that we have here. As you guys can tell, some fiberglass work has been had on this car. Um, we've got quite a bit of restoration done to the fenders. Pretty much all four of the fenders at some point had been cut out for larger wheels and tires, which is fairly common on these Corvettes. So I do all of my fiberglass work, of course, here in house before the chassis goes underneath the car. It's a lot easier to get in there. I have it real nice and tidy up in the bonding strip area. If you ran your fingers along my fenders, you wouldn't really even be able to tell that there's a fix in there. And that's what I go for. Um, so a lot of just extra care and diligence is needed to achieve that. But we go the extra mile and try to get things right. You'll also notice that the wheel wells are all fully coated. Let me bring you over to the lighter side so you can see we use a really tough coating. It is not the asphalt based crap that would have come from the factory. This is a much more premium product, but this will stand the life of the car. Um, it's, it's really, really good stuff. I'll bring you guys underneath. You can see we have all of the new plates bucked in with all of the correct rivets and things are looking fantastic underneath this car. So it is pretty much ready at this point to go ahead and have the chassis put up underneath it and then we're gonna get it off to paint. You'll also notice that our 63 coupe, the resto mod, has had the body removed off of the chassis. This is a street shop chassis. Now, I know you guys, when you're wanting to build a resto mod, the main question is, what is the difference between the chassis? They're all big money, no lie, guys. They're all, you're gonna spend 30,000 and up for a quality rolling chassis for these cars. So what is the main difference? Well, you're gonna have to stay tuned with me. Please like, subscribe, and, and just stay with me because I'm gonna have one of their main competitors here very, very soon for another project. So we will get to side by side, see the difference between a street shop and arguably their biggest competitor, which is Art Morrison. So very soon I will be able to share that with you guys. But in the meantime, we have a, just, this thing is awesome. And that is an LS7 570 horsepower crate motor. You'll notice the Tremec TKX behind it, billet, rear differential, I mean, all C7 components for the suspension. This is really, really a cool package. So I am excited because this guy has incredible vision about what he wants to transform this car into, and it is gonna be so much greater than what you see right here. So again, you'll have to stay tuned for that. You'll notice our 67 Goodwood car is coming along. This thing, man, what a jewel. I am so happy to be able to put out stuff like this where, you know, I'm just proud of the team. We're doing really, really the best that we can here. You'll notice I have a carbon fiber enclosure back there. We actually made that. It tucks in really nice. It weighs like two pounds. That is going to sit underneath the panel there. So it will be, of course, fully hidden. It is ported. Um, it's completely made of carbon fiber, so it's gonna house the JL Audio 6W3 that we have over there. Um, fully integrated into what looks like a factory radio, but of course that is fully upgraded with Bluetooth. We have modern speaker speakers hidden underneath the speaker grill there, so this car is gonna really sound good. This guy is into high-end home audio so i wanted to go the extra mile and play with composites to make him a really cool speaker enclosure uh, most of the time that's done with standard fiberglass which achieves kind of the same thing it weighs a lot more but just not nearly as cool so 
you can see the engine bay on this car is coming along really, really nice. We have the vintage air, power, power brakes, power steering. You can see we've actually upgraded to a Borgeson. So this thing, just an absolute jewel. I'm really proud of where this is coming. I also want to introduce you guys to our newest project that has come into the shop. I've been waiting around eight months for something for this car and it is in route supposedly maybe next week i will have this mystery item it's a big one and of course you know if it took eight months for it to uh to be built and and shipped here you know it's it's substantial um but we are ready to dive into this car i am super excited to get into this with ivana because this is going to be a learning experience for her um, and disassembly of these things i'm very methodical about our system how we take things apart it's more than just bagging and tagging stuff it's doing things in the correct way um, and it starts with the disassembly of the car so um, this is going to be a really, really cool project, so I'm excited to have that. Um, it is, of course, a 427 tri-power um, with factory AC, or at least for the most part. This one is a little bit unique, and I'll show you guys. I know we're all Corvette guys around here if you're watching this. This appears to me to be a factory big block car, or a factory AC car. Um, I know that it would have had a frigid air, not a Harrison style compressor, but of course that would have been changed. And these lines are different than the factory style block, but it does look like a factory AC radiator support. It has the battery over on that side with the cutout and the fender. It has the six knobs and the factory louver in the center. So we all know that that's hen's teeth. This is big money to not only buy that but to take out your dash and to do that whole project so most aftermarket acs just won't include the six knobs and the center um, it's just too much work and too much cost but this does have an aftermarket plastic condenser box up under there so that's what makes me think at some point that this was a factory ac car that maybe they upgraded um, to a higher flow condenser maybe they wanted more airflow or maybe more efficiency for whatever reason they changed it around so what my plan is keep this of course an air conditioned car but upgrade it a little further to a vintage air kit um, so we will have four times the airflow of what even this condenser unit is putting out um, and of course it'll blow 48 degrees or something of that effect even on the hottest day. So Vintage Air, I really stand behind their product because I've installed a ton of them um, and they, they just work fantastic. So let's walk around this car. I just wanna document, show you guys before. We don't get a lot into that. You see how tight the gap is on the door here. Um, we have some reveals going on. We got a big reveal there. You'll see, just wait, hang on guys. Wait until my guy Joe gets a hold of this car. He, uh, he does mastery with these. We've got some pretty good bubbles forming there in the paint. Of course, the, the standard checkering and, and scratches and waviness, you know, that's all kind of par for the course with the Corvettes, um, unless, you know, you have one painted by me, then it looks like that. But that's hundreds of hours, guys, I'm not gonna lie. That's so much more than just a paint job. That's, that's a body job and then a paint job. So that's what I feel it really makes ours special. I, I do a lot of special stuff here in my shop, but I make sure that my paint guy does special work as well. This one is next to paint. It is waiting to go to paint. Um, my paint guy is actually upgrading his facility right now. He's adding an additional bay. So this one is the very next one to go. My 63 convertible, I'm making really good progress on that in concurrent, in, in conjunction rather, with my 63 coupe that is on the lift here. Um, again, we are working now on engine bay and interior stuff. So it's coming out really well. This is the chassis for the white 67 coupe. We're filming over here. Thank you. <laughs> I told her I would embarrass her at least once with the YouTube channel. 
my 66 is like almost there guys so i'm so excited to show you this one this one's going to be like a final reveal video basically because this thing is is that close it is fantastic that nassau blue is it really pops so anyhow i appreciate you guys thank you so much for joining me and until next time take care